Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Um, uh, five minutes went goes by very fast. I you for five minutes. Thank you. Thank you, um, Ms. Cycle. You, you mentioned that uh, in, in this that Europe has thirty four thousand megawatts, or the rest of the world thirty four thousand. We're we're at forty two. Uh, megawatts. The goal is to get to 30,000 in this country and within a number of years. Mr. Hardy, you, your bottom line was we need regulatory certainty. Do we have that today? I think that we are seeing um, positive momentum in building confidence in this supply chain, in this industry, which is bringing the supply chain investments that we've spoken about. The Biden administration's target of 30 gigawatts by 2030, Boehm's advancement of federal permitting on the 15 or so projects that are active are, are bringing confidence. But we, these are large, expensive infrastructure projects that that we need certainty, long-term certainty, in order for us to invest and in order for the supply chain to make those investments. So I, I want to say that virtually everybody here uh, supports an all of the above approach, which includes renewables. But do we, what, do we need, what do we need to do legislatively uh, to work with industry to make sure that we have regulatory certainty to, to try and achieve this goal that, that's, that's out there? The cycle? Thank you, Chairman Upton. Um, I think you're asking a really important question, and, and certainly as representatives up here, we agree that um, you know it's we've got to advance all energy sources. We're committed to making sure we we're looking at this energy transition through the lens of how do we how do we do it in a way that's reliable and affordable. And um, I think as as we, we have regulatory certainty and predictability in as much as this administration and the Department of Interior are currently making timely decisions about permitting and leasing. We don't know that that's always going to be the case going forward. I do think that there are some ways that we could find to work together that would allow for expedited processes. Um, it's not to say the process today is broken. I think when you're standing up a new industry and a new permitting process for the first time in any country, there are, you're going to find ways to improve that process. So how, how is the re I'm sorry to interrupt, but how, so, how, so how does the rest of the world get 34,000 megawatts? And we're, we're at 42. Um, do they, they have a shot clock? I mean, how, how, what, what do they do on the regulatory side that, that we're not? Well, so I think we have a lot to learn from other countries, right? I mean, it's it's very clear, as you pointed out, globally, we're looking at 34,000 megawatts versus 42 in this country. It's been a slow start, but the good news is I think we can catch up. I think you've seen from this administration a commitment to this 30,000 gigawatt goal, which is terrific, but I think... At the same time, it's not, it's not as easy as installing one wind turbine, right? We have to think holistically about what we want to do with this industry. What does this mean in terms of the kinds of jobs we're creating domestically? Well, how, what percentage of the supply chain is um, coming from the United States versus other countries? How do we make sure that the, the transmission planning, which is a really long and complicated process, allows us to bring those 30 gigawatts on? So, I guess we could look at it and say the rest of the world is ahead of us, but I look at it and say we can learn a lot from what's worked and what hasn't. So let me ask another question. I'm going to ask unanimous consent to, to put into the record a, a letter addressed to Mr. Rush and myself uh, from the Affordable Energy for New Jersey. It's a three-page letter. We'll put it in, into the record. We talk about we want to make it affordable. We do, particularly so, when we see well, energy. I yeah, without – I would ask unanimous consent to stick – Put this in the record, Mr. Chairman. So ordered. And you already have a copy, as I do. But I, I, when you talk about you want to make this affordable, we all want that, particularly when we see these energy alarming energy costs uh, that are going up. In this letter from the Affordable Energy for New Jersey, they talk about the uh, uh, currently in 2035, 
the last year of the contract in New Jersey, it's going to be $470 per megawatt hour. By contrast, the average price for wholesale electricity in New England last year was about $31. So a, a difference of 15-fold. How does that make it affordable? Well, I, I think, again, we're, we, are, we just permitted the first project in the United States uh, for offshore wind. And if you look at the lessons in the renewable energy sector, I'm pretty optimistic. Um, the cost of wind has come down 71% since 2009. Solar is down 90%. And offshore wind, yes, initially there is going to be um, you know, a, a, a cost for doing something and being a first mover in the United States. But I also think what's interesting about many of the opening statements we were focused on the fact that we've got rising energy co co rising commodity co costs for things like propane, heating oil, natural gas. The beauty of offshore wind is that the wind is free. We don't have to rely on these commodities that are subject to the whims of the global market. And I think over time, um, what we've learned by looking at the European example is that costs have come down 43%. There is cost parity. And I'm very optimistic that we as an industry can get there. Uh, I know my time has expired, but appreciate the you being here. The gentleman's time has 